So we have a guest in the studio to give you, all right? Now, our guest today is the great-grandchild of political campaigner, women's rights activist, and aristocrat, Pumilayo Ransom Kuti. He is also the grandson of legendary musician, activist, and originator of Afrobeat, Fela Kuti. If you are still wondering, he is the son of four-time Grammy nominee musician, Femi Kuti. Guys, we have in the building the super-talented musician, Made Kuti! Hey, Madi, how are Ramadan you doing? Mubarak. <laughs> You're just very mm. calm, generally. Is this how yeah. you are on a normal day, like on a norm? Yeah, I think so, you know. Also, because you performed last night, you told us that yes, you were performing. Yes. I did more dancing than playing. I did play. oh. <laughs> Love it. Now, look, looking at Le the way we yes. introduced you, mm. do you always feel some certain kind of pressure to live up to mm. the Kuti name? No. I don't because I'm, it's because of my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I had a very liberating childhood. I was very free to do whatever I wanted. You know, I did a lot of self-discovery, a lot of you know, self-expression. And before I really understood what the legacy represented, I found what I wanted to represent. Yeah. So, you know, I just, I live life to do the best that I can. Okay. I mean, because, you know, I was going to actually ask about your childhood. I wanted to know whether you were just on Saturdays or weekends, you were listening to music and you were, they were training you for, and it was all learning of instruments and all that. Like, what was it like, like a typical weekend in your house? It was quite, it was a lot of exposure to music. So my dad used to play four times a week at the strike. Huh. And he played Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. Friday mornings, I would wake up for school mm -hmm. and I'd still catch him on stage. I used to play for about eight hours straight. Wow. So my interest in music, I sort of brought that about because, you know, I'd go to my dad and I'd say, ah, I want to learn how to play the trumpet. Mm. Get me a teacher. And then, ah, the sax and the drums mm -hmm. and the bass. Mm. So I just picked a bit of every instrument as I grew old. Mm -hmm. I can play. And just like your grandfather, you can play so many instruments. I think you can play the sax, as yeah. you said, trumpet. What else yeah. can you play? On my album, I played everything. I wow. played the drums, bass, guitar. Very sad, 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 that is not casual. That is amazing. And I know that you also went to music school. But before we talk about that, we're going to go on a quick break. And when we come back, we'll still have the great Made Kuti in the studio. Alrighty, thank you so much for staying here with us. Of course, we still have my Dekuti in the studio. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and we're talking about all the instruments it, you could play. It, that's right. And you were saying that's you right. So casually. <laughs> and I was saying, yeah, he was like, I can play the sax, yeah. this and that. Me too, I can play the flutes. All right. That's, that's <laughs> finally. I know you went to. And I can't play the flute, so yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You yeah. went to Trinity Conservatoire, yeah, I right? Did. And you studied music there. I did. I did the bachelor's in composition. It's a kind of classical setting school. Wow. Yeah. So this is like music is the thing for you. No side yeah. thing going on. I mean, it's been the thing for as long as I can remember because I was always around it. So I always had access to it. I had access to the people that, you know, practiced it. Mm -hmm. So in the band, my dad had you know, every kind of musician. Mm -hmm. So I learned a bit from each person. I was going on tours with him since mm -hmm. I was five years old. I used to watch him write music and I used to watch him record music in the studio. And I think the first Grammy nominated album I was part of, yeah. I was about I was about ten years old. Oh my wow. dad's album was Day by Day. And the Coldplay yeah. one. And the Coldplay one as well, yeah. That is amazing so, yeah. stuff. Uh, Just talk uh, about your achievements uh, in soft voice. That's right. But then let's talk about <laughs> your works. I mean, you have an album out with your dad. Mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. Yes, and yours is for for you. Forward. E word forward. Yeah. And then your, your dad's own is Stop, Stop the, the Hate. hate. Exactly. And uh, put together Legacy plus. Positive yeah, or legacy plus, plus or something. Yeah, yeah interesting stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, why, did you, uh, why did you two decide yeah. to do something together? Yeah, it was... We were doing two separate projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. My dad had finished writing his music and I was in the process of writing mine. And we actually completed it separately. And then his idea was, ah, you know, I don't think anybody has ever released a parent and child kind of compilation mm -hmm. album like this as co-composers. And then we did research and so far we haven't found a single person that has done a project like this. So, you know, he just, his idea was, the legacy is so powerful. Yeah. And I was just thinking, everything I have and everything I've achieved so far in my life 
And whatever I do achieve, I know will be thanks to his upbringing. So to be able to step out as my own solo artist under his own kind of, not under his umbrella, but with his guidance, would be so beautiful. So that's sort of how we put it together. I love that. Was, yeah. I love that. That's a very unique way to look at it. I mean, you're, you're respecting the legacy and you're saying, you know what, this has given me a foot in the... Exactly. You know, it exactly, has helped yeah. me out. But let's talk about, you know, the legacy, Afrobeats versus Afrobeats. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do you have a problem with Afrobeats? I don't have a problem with anything. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I mean, like, like we've established, you know, I'm a musician. So... Mm -hmm. My craft requires that I do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. It means I wake up every day, I practice. If I've decided to play five instruments, I have to practice five instruments mm -hmm. every day. I have to make sure that I'm well informed about the industry, mm. business. And, you know, that's just what I do. I appreciate that, you know, people do music differently. Because mm. I think that's, you know, that's what makes life beautiful. What I will say is that I'm concerned that in the musical scene, the industry is lacking in musicianship. By that, I mean where the whole process of proper credits for composers, mm. proper credits for songwriters, for Good saxophonists, changes. for instrumentalists, mm -hmm. all of that needs to be better, a lot structured. better structured and a lot of credit is due where it's not yet given. That's mm. right. Think, okay, yeah. talking about mm. Afrobeat, um, so when we listen to a Monday Afrobeat, mm. how is your sound different from the other Afrobeats that we have? Your dad sound, Shimon's yeah. sound. Mine is, mine is very experimental because I have a very broad taste in music. Mm. So I like, like my first exposure to music was my dad's music. And then I go into commercial pop. And then all of a sudden it was jazz. Right? And mm. then it was classical music because I was practicing a lot. Mm. And then it was like electronic jazz. Mm. So if you listen to my side of the album, every single song is actually different. Mm. The, whole, the only thing tying the, the album together is the is the heart of Afrobeat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can sort of have a sense that everything is Afrobeat mm -hmm. as a foundation, but it just goes everywhere. Okay, having yeah. said that, I would like to know, because you are young, yeah. and uh, you know you would not compare the way you do things to your fathers and all that. So is it that you have a bit of, okay, the youthful thing going on for you and adding it to, or spicing it up? Like bringing it all <laughs> together. Yeah, into or something <laughs> like, okay, so, you know, I'm different, I come from a, a, a different era, and yeah. you know, and yeah. all that. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't know why I even place myself in my generation. I, you know, yeah. I listen to his music and yeah. I see that you're very well detailed. Like he's still going for having a band, having yeah, all the exactly. instruments yeah. there. And I feel like there's a, there's a vacuum in the Nigerian music industry for that. But let's even talk a little bit about, you know, activism. Um, I yeah. know that during the NSAS protest, you lent your voice to this. Do you also see yourself just like your great -grand your grandfather, mm. Felakuti, was also a voice of the people? Do yeah. you see yourself being like that? I mean, I like to refer myself the way my dad tends to refer to himself as, you know, a musician that sings about what he's concerned about. Mm. And I just, I identify as a concerned citizen, not so much an activist. Okay. I think I feel like that word has been abused by, <laughs> <laughs> by, <laughs> by on. Yeah, I mean, it's like a lot of things. You know, if you, if you use it too much and you misrepresent the meaning of it, mm. and it becomes more about personal gain than about the actual mission of activism, you suddenly don't want to identify with that group of people anymore. So I just identify as a concerned citizen. You know, I write music that I care about. I'll speak about the things I care about. And if anything I believe is not, you know, it's not correct, I will make it my own personal, like, mission to correct those things in the ways that I can. I wouldn't say I'm a champion of the people or anything mm. like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So very All right. humble. All right, Love ladies it. and gentlemen, we'll go on a quick break. And when we come back, we still have Madi Kuti in the building. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> You're so free. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes, it's just very <laughs> obvious that you do what you love. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's very, very obvious right there. But one thing is, yes, of course, we know your background. We've said your background to people like, okay, mm. the great fella Kuti, Femi Kuti, and now Made Kuti. Uh, but then let's talk about the love of what you do and then the mm. commercial success mm -hmm. of okay. what you do. 
Because, yes, it's one thing to love what you do. Yeah. And it's one thing to perhaps uh, you Make come a from a, a comfortable yeah. background. But how about how the... Because I can see that mm. a lot of work go into this, mm -hmm. uh, the live band thing. And, you know, and, uh, yes, instruments. Yes, yeah. And then we're talking about, you know, even uh, giving credits to certain people and yeah. all that. So are you doing this for commercial purposes too? And how lucrative is this? I mean, to a degree. What I care first about music, mm -hmm. and then I care about family right after that. And of course, if I care about family, I have to provide for family. And if music, to a degree, is not lucrative, then I can't obviously survive, can't put food on the table. But I don't care about having too much. I care about having just enough. You know, I don't need more than one car. You know what I mean? If I can eat three times a day, then I'm OK. I don't need the most expensive clothes. I can have my excellent stylist put together mm -hmm. this kind of outfit for me, mm -hmm. you know, Bryman. So there was an interview I watched by Wynton Marsalis, who was a trumpeter, and it was from his dad. His dad used to go on playing pubs, you know, he was an excellent jazz musician, and he'd play from late midnight to like early morning, like mm -hmm. when you'd expect the place to be empty. And he wouldn't stop playing until he's given time to play. Mm. And regardless of how many people were in the audience, he'd play like he was playing to a thousand mm. people, mm -hmm. fully passionate. And then he followed his son, who became a multi-Grammy nominated artist, mm -hmm. winner, actually, to the Grammys. And he was so disillusioned by the whole event. And he just said, he said to his son, who was a you know, Grammy winner, he said, I hope you don't think this means you can play. <laughs> 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 So really, you know, he was really worried, man. I hope I this that. doesn't, you don't think you can play because of all of this. Mm. So, you know, that's someone that raised really about three really established, successful musicians mm -hmm. that are now, you know, leaders of institutions yeah. and educational mm -hmm. institutions. Mm -hmm. And his philosophy was really just about music mm -hmm. and playing music. I think if you do the right things to a degree, the good things will come your way. And if it doesn't come to you, mm -hmm. it will leave and live through your legacy for mm -hmm. the people that come after you. Wow. I think Fela really did go through a lot of struggle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of us are reaping the benefits of that what, is he, true. what he did, you know. Yeah. We're, we're always fond of talking about Femi, Fela, and everything. Let's talk about your mom, who I'm yeah. to be a force to reckon with yeah. in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. How has she influenced you? Is she... In many ways, yeah. in many ways. For example, this is her. Oh. <laughs> you know? Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> and if not for her, I really, I would just come oh, so here in shorts. <laughs> I'm not a stylish person, yeah. man. And she is in talks with my, his name is Bryman. He does mm -hmm. everything, like my mm -hmm. performance outfits and everything that I wear on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But my mom is also there as a motherly figure, you know, a support. Mm -hmm advice just to know that no matter what you have a pillar of support i got you so yeah that's what's good i got you okay. i got you oh, wow oh. so 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 wrapping up this interview right now mm. we've seen what everybody is supposed to be remembered for fella your great grandmother when we talk about madi kuti what do you want to be remembered for i don't know man i don't know you know i'll be dead <laughs> so I but I, I think if anything it's the kind of values that i live by i think if you know children can listen to my music and learn anything from the life that I live is that values matter. Mm -hmm. And in as much as they matter to you, they matter even more to the community that you're part of. Every, every society has a kind of identity, cultural identity. Mm -hmm. And right now, Nigeria's group cultural identity isn't positive. A lot of time we're played as you know, corrupt, a lot of times we're yeah. played as mm -hmm. one thing or the other. And each of us has to represent the progress. It's mm -hmm. not for any particular individual to take on the toll of the entire, mm -hmm. you know, culture. So yeah, I, I think I would like to see be seen as someone that contributed to positivity wow. and progress. Wow. Wow. Well said. I mean, can I say anything more than that? Thank you so much for coming here. No, thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Mm -hmm. All right. Before mm -hmm. we go, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much, Madikuti. Mm -hmm. Yes, a reminder that happiness is free. free. Check this out.